Friday, March 29th, 2024, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So we're going to look at the reasons why Larry Fink hates gold. He's made some comments about gold recently. Uh, there's an article that came out on uh, Kitco, and I'm going to go over that and tell you why I think he hates gold. You might be wondering what I think about the recent uh, move in the fiat currencies. The, they're really sinking now, aren't they? And I've spoken about how all fiat currencies will eventually sink to worthlessness versus gold and silver. And uh, yes, it's uh, taking a long time in a his, on a historical basis. Uh, other fiat currencies have not lasted more than 18, 20 years. The fiat dollar has gone on for a long time. And the reason why I think it's gone on for a long time is because it's been the major reserve currency and it's uh, operated off its laurels. There used to be a saying back in the 60s and even early 70s that the dollar was as good as gold. And uh, I think it's one of the reasons why. But that's fa uh, fast um, disappearing, the, the reputation of the fiat dollar. And it is a fiat dollar. It's not a real dollar, of course. So I try not to get too uh, despondent nor excited about what gold does. So, yeah, of course, it's... Uh, It's uh, encouraging to see that gold is doing what it should. Silver, in my opinion, uh, will do even more than gold uh, once uh, silver breaks out of overhead resistance. The teacup and handle formation in silver has been uh, forming for even longer than gold for over 40 years. So there's a lot of pent up energy there that's been suppressed. So I, I think silver, yeah, just keeps stacking, in my opinion. Uh, gold, we've had a teacup and handle formation that was just over uh, 12 years old or 13 years old. So not as long as uh, silver, but it, 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 this will uh, also catapult gold a lot higher or all fiat currencies a lot lower it's not just about the dollar it's all fiat currencies making new lows versus gold and the last time we had this kind of uh, teacup formation in gold was uh in the early 2000s when gold was trying to break out of uh the 400 430 level and gold uh hasn't looked back since then yes there's been ups and downs and there probably will be in the future, but um, it's been, uh, yeah, it's done what it's uh, supposed to do, what it says on the tin. So back to uh, Larry Fink. What you need to understand about Larry Fink is that he runs an investment business in the financial markets. So he's part of the... Uh, financial elite he's in bed with the federal reserve with all the major new york banks uh, major london banks he's very uh, influential worldwide not just uh in finance uh but also in politics and uh he's even uh, uh on the board of trustees of that uh, <laughs> uh great institution right great institution called called the world economic forum as you can see here, and we know that what the uh, World Economic Forum has in store for the uh, population of the planet, uh, they want us uh, enslaved in their digital world and also enslaved in their 15-minute cities. And uh, they want you uh, to own nothing and be happy. So that, that's where Larry Fink comes from. Uh, the other thing that I would say about Larry Fink, uh, I think BlackRock has like 10 trillion under management. Management. 
Um, what does that mean? Well, in terms of uh, how it helps Larry Fink, well, if he gets a little percentage uh, in fees every year from that 10 trillion, we're talking uh, billions in revenue for his firm. Uh, don't know what he earns, but huge bonuses. So uh, that's what he's concerned about because physical gold, and I'm going to give you an example here. Physical gold, um, when you hold it, or you might even want to keep it in a private vault that you trust. I don't think BlackRock has a private vault. And, and that's what they want you to do as well. They, they want to make it easy for you and convenient. So they create these ETFs which really uh, are nothing but uh, a derivative of the real thing um, so that you don't have to bother with keeping, you know, uh, your assets safe. And that's the, the spiel they give you. But I'm going to give you an example of how you can keep physical gold. And Larry Fink thinks it's... Uh, it's like useless because it doesn't do anything. Well, and that's the whole thing about money and gold, that it doesn't do anything. But in a world where our monetary and political leaders are debasing the currency so much, uh, it does one thing, though. It, it keeps up with the uh, rate of debasement of the currency. And I said I'm going to give you an example. Well... I can give you an example uh, that I, an experience that I've had. And uh, so what I've got here um, an invoice or receipt of a gold bar that I bought at Gold Investments from the 6th of July, 2004. And I can show it to you. It doesn't have my address. And you can see here it says Mario Neko care of men financial at the time i worked at men financial which became mf global and you can see i bought uh, a 150 gram gold bar 999 for 370 pounds so yes uh, gold investments who i am affiliated with uh, at the time mike temple was in charge but his sons uh oliver and simon are now in charge. Yes, at the time, Mike Temple made 1% or 2% um, premium or, or fee selling me a disc gold bar, and I'll show it to you. It's a 50 gram. I still have it. Yes, it's an NM Rothschild 50 gram gold bar, as you can see, 999. 370 pounds at the time. So you can look up nowadays uh, the same, well, not the same, but a 50 gram gold bar is worth about just under 3,000 pounds. And uh, Gold Investments hasn't made a fee on it every year because it's mine now and I keep it. It's outside the system. And if you look here at the prospectus and I'm going to take the new uh, Bitcoin iShares Bitcoin Trust yes they lure you in without charging you some kind of fee in the first year as they say here but uh, all investors it says will incur the same sponsors fee which is the weighted average of those fee rates after the 12-month waiver period is over, the sponsor's fee will be a quarter of a percent. And right, this is according to uh, this prospectus. It's a $5 billion uh, trust. So if you do a, a quarter of a percent uh, of $5 billion, that's $12.5 million <laughs> that BlackRock is getting. And, and Mr. Fink is... Uh, probably getting a big chunk of that and uh, yeah and they'll get fees every year so I, I've had this gold bar for 20 years and no fees yes 
if I do plan to exchange it for fiat so that I invest in something or have an emergency, I, I will pay a small, uh, I, I won't sell it at the spot price, but it's not the point. The point is that someone hasn't been taking a fee every year. I remember before I cashed in my uh, private pension, the fees were exorbitant every year. <laughs> I, I had to, uh, at one point, send them some cash to pay the fees because I wasn't paying into the private pension anymore. So uh, it got to a point where there's no cash and uh, sometimes they even had to sell some of my shares uh, to pay for the fees. So that's why Larry Fink hates um, gold. Uh, and as he says here in the uh, Kitco article, he says here, when I visited India in November, I met policymakers who lamented their fellow citizens' fondness for gold. The commodity has underperformed the Indian stock market, proving a subpar investment for individual investors. Nor has investing in gold helped the country's economy. <laughs> well, well, let's look at the um, first argument that it hasn't outperformed the stock market. Maybe, but... I, I bet you uh, some of those uh, stock market funds are BlackRock funds. And uh, with a 10%, at least 10% return, I would say, in rupees since the beginning of the century, uh, gold has provided a, a very good protection. Uh, it does help the economy because, yes, you can exchange that for anything, anytime you want. That's the whole point of savings. Uh, what Larry Fink wants, he wants you to keep giving your efforts, your savings to him so he can manage and skim off uh, loads of fees. Um, the other reason why I think he hates gold is because he's part of this globalist cabal. Uh, he's part of the World Economic Forum. He's in bed with the central banks, especially the Federal Reserve, probably the BIS. And they don't want uh, individuals to be reliant, self-sufficient, independent, sovereign, to have their own central bank themselves. Uh, there's the old saying that uh, Jim, the late Jim Sinclair used to say, you need to be your own central bank. And that's why he, he hates gold. So the article says here, BlackRock CEO Larry Fink says gold investors hurt capital market development. It's such a, a ridiculous statement <laughs> uh, because what's going to happen is that this fiat currency system that we're under, it's going to implode and the people who are going to save the world and civilization and capital markets are those who are holding real money, uh, gold and silver. Uh, I, I'm not sure what Larry Fink uh, thinks is going to happen. He thinks maybe that uh, people will just uh, bow down to him and the central bankers when the whole thing implodes and ask them for, you know, the worthless CBDC so that they can keep track of everyone and everything they do, everything they, everywhere where they put their money. And the other reason as well, I, I think uh, Larry Fink wants people to be in his funds and in the capital, capital markets. And I, I do this because fiat currency is not really capital. Uh, this is capital. And, and, and if we look at um, John Exter's inverted pyramid, What's at the bottom of the pyramid? Well, it's gold and silver as well. So that's the capital. Yeah, and uh, Larry Fink also probably wants to make sure that uh, this system, which is really on its last leg and is teetering on the edge, <laughs> uh, he wants to have uh, what David Rogers Webb said in his great taking book, the collateral 
uh, to keep BlackRock alive, to keep uh, JP Morgan and all, all the too big to fail alive when everything implodes. And that's why he doesn't want you to have gold or silver or any asset outside the system. And that's why I, I, I say to the uh, Indian housewives, keep your gold. Don't trust Larry Fink. Don't trust ETFs. Don't trust uh, funds. Yes, you might want to speculate a little bit on them, but uh, just for fun, <laughs> uh, speculate with an amount that you are uh, comfortable with losing. That's what I would say. And that's how I look at uh, uh, you know, mining gold or silver mining investment. It's a speculation uh, and uh, you should do it with capital that you're prepared to lose. It could be very rewarding and I think uh, it might be in the next year or two, especially seeing how the miners uh, have perked up in the last few uh, trading days of uh, March. So there you go. <laughs> you probably know about this um, FT editorial, of course. So going, going gold, that's from 20 years ago. April 2004 gold was at $400.65. Now we're almost at 2400 Yeah, I know we have a little ways to go, but I think it's only a matter of time that we're there. So when I read this, I thought it was so outrageous that I had to cut it out and then laminate it. And I think uh, what Larry Fink is saying here is very outrageous as well. And... Uh, in 10, 20 years time, people are going to look back and uh, <laughs> they're going to laugh at uh, Larry Fink, in my opinion. So there you go. Uh, with that, I'm going to wish you all uh, a great uh, long weekend. For those of you who celebrate Easter, a, a great Easter. And uh, yeah, I I'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye.